Tav Samach Amen Aleph. We'll begin Nun Tes Samach Beis. Three lines from the bottom. Bonu Beis Chodesh Vekona Kelim Chadoshim. So the Mishnah said, "Did you make a bracha a shechianu on the purchase of these new items?" Amar Ravu Na Loishan Alish In Loi Kiyot Sebehem. That's only if he has not inherited something similar. Similar. Aval Yesh Loi Kiyot Sebam. But he already has. He's inherited a similar item. So then, it's not such a simcha. Ain't Saruch Lavarach. That's what Ravuna says. Rav Yechon Amar Afilu Yesh Loi Kiyot Sebam Saruch Lavarach. Rav Yechon says no. Even if he has inherited a similar item, he nevertheless it's still considered a simcha. His purchase of it is considered a simcha, and he makes a bracha. According to this lashon, that everyone would agree, if he already purchased an item, so he already had the simcha of purchasing the item, and now he purchases it again, you don't have to make the bracha. That's according to this lashon. The a second lashon says, "Amar of Huna Loishan Alish Loi Kana V'Chazarakan." That's only if he is not Kana V'Chazarakan. So according to this law, Shana Rav Huna is agreeing that if he has inherited an item before and now he's purchasing it, it's considered an additional simcha with the purchase, and you do make the brocha. But if he purchases and purchases again, there's no additional simcha, and you don't make the brocha. And Rav Yechana says, no, even it, buying it again, but the additional purchase, buying the item, even if he purchased it before, that's still an additional simcha, you do have to make a bracha. Mechlal, in this lashon, therefore we make a diuk, the if he inherited already, and now he purchased it, then according to this lashon, everyone would agree that if he hasn't purchased it yet, even though he has inherited it, everyone agrees that he would have to make the bracha. Maysville asks you a cash uh, from the following price. Uh, Bona buys Chodesh, he built a new house, the ain't like a yitzabai. Or he has not inherited something like this. Kona kelam chadashim, the ain't like a yitzabai. He bought kelam and he did not inherit something similar. Tzorach levarach. He does have to make the bracha. Yesh like a yitzabai. But if it's yesh like yitzim, if he already inherited, ain't sarach levarach. So if he has purchased it and he has not inherited, he has to make the bracha. But if he's already inherited a similar item, he does not make the bracha divram here. Rabbi Yehuda, Imer Ben Kach, or Ben Kach, sarach levarach. Rabbi Yehuda says, in any event, he does have to make the bracha. Even if he has already inherited, he does have to make the bracha. According to Lishna Kama, we can understand Rav Huna Karamer. So Rav Huna is consistent with Rav Mershit, that if he already has inherited it, then we say that he already has it, he doesn't make the bracha. Rav Yechen Rav Yehuda, and Rav Yechen says, no, he does make the bracha like Rav Yehuda. El Lishna Basra, but according to the Lishna Basra, Bishlam Rav Huna, and according to the Lishna Basra that says, everyone agrees that if he has inherited it already, and then he now purchases, he does make the bracha. So that would be fine. Bishlam, then we say that El Lishna Basra, Bishlam Rav Huna, Rav Yehuda. That comes according to Rav Yehuda, that he also agrees that you would have to make the bracha even if you had inherited it already. Elder of Yechen, but according to Rav Yechen, who says that even if you already purchased it before and you purchase it again, you have to make the bracha. Dhamma Kiman, apparently he's like neither of them, like Rav Yehuda, like Rav Yehuda, because even Rav Yehuda only said that you make the bracha if you inherited it previously and now you purchase it. But that would imply that if you already pre previously purchased it and you're purchasing it again, that you do not have to make the bracha. So it comes out, according to the second lotion, that apparently Rav Yechen is like neither of them. Amalach Rav Yechen, Rav Yechen says, Who had into the Rav Yehuda? He says, No. When Rav Yehuda said that if he had previously inherited it, now he purchased it, you do have to make the bracha. He means to say, but also he, as Shita is, even if you purchased it before and you're purchasing it again, you have to make the bracha. Why does he say the machlaikis if he inherited it and now he purchased it? To show you how far Ramer goes. To teach you that I feel Kona and Vyeshlav he and previously inherited, even if he is buying it now, he purchased you still don't have to make the bracha. But 
Rav Yehuda himself, Rav Yechelen says, holds that even Khan of a Chazor Khan, even he bought it, buys again, he has to make the Brach. For the Gemara, why does he set up the Machlaik is that way? Why doesn't he say the Machlaik is in a case where he purchases a person again? And tell you how far Rabbi Yehuda says, how far he goes, that you do have to make the Bracha. Gemara answers, the, the principle normally is that the one who is Matir, who is made, that is Mekal, we want to show how far he goes because it is. Is a shows more of a, 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 a conviction in the opinion to be makel because to be machmer, it's easier to be machmer on a sofa it can be machmer, but to be makel is to be makel it shows that there's more of a conviction, a conviction rather. So therefore, we say koyach de hetera odifle is more of a koyach of, head, uh, of hetera. That's why we want to show how far the one who's makel goes. Not so clear in this case why this is considered a kayach de hetera because it's if it's a suffix over here, then there is a inyan of a suffix brachas lahakel, and by saying that, by saying that you do not make the bracha, it's not so clear why this is considered that it's more of a conviction because. One, it's true that normally one would not be makel if you're dealing with a, a din, a chiv, and a chiv deraisa. If he's makel, he's matir, it shows how firm he is in his conviction. But over here, in fact, he says you do not make the bracha. Perhaps that's because suffolk bracha is lahakil. Perhaps we would, in this case, not apply the principle of koyach de terodif. But nevertheless, the Gemara does apply this for over here and says that's why Rabbi Yehuda says it in this case to show you that the Machlaik is how far Ramir goes to tell you that even if he had inherited already, he does not make the Brocha again. So the Mishnah said you make the Brocha on the raw, even if good is going to come out from it, you make the Brocha of the raw, the current situation, and you make the Brocha of Dainanus. If there's a flood that swept over the land. Even though ultimately there's good that's going to come out of it because now that all of the soil has been swept over on the land, it's ultimately going to be fertile and it's going to produce more. But Hashtami Arohi because it ruined his crops. So we assess the current situation, not the future situation. And conversely, something which is good, even so something bad might come out of it, we assess the current situation, which is Taiva. So, hey, Chidomi, going to Ashkach Metziah, the person found a Metziah, so he found a Metziah, so now it's good. Now, even though a bad might come out of it, so, for us, say, we're speaking in a case where people know that he found it. So it's known, it's, uh, it's common knowledge. So it might come to the authorities and they'll expropriate Hashdamiya. Toivi, in the meantime, it's considered Toivi. You assess based on the current situation and you make the bracha based on the current situation, which is Toivi. Oh, you see, Shemu Baris me here, watching the tail and raises the fillish up. So if he, you know, his wife is expecting and he makes a tefillah that it should be a zocher. It's a tefillah shop because it's already been determined what the gender is. So there's no purpose in the tefillah. V'loy mahani rachme, mosi rav yosef, v'acha yoldu baz v'tikra es shmo edina. You need to say that tefillah does not help to change the gender. It says that and by Leah, she gave birth to a daughter and she called her Dina. My the Acher it says the at for Acher and after Amra the Acher she done a Leah dinner about so means after she judged made a judgment on herself the Amra she said the following she made the following cheshbon you'd be shvotim asim the lotzis miyakav Yaakov Avinu is going to father twelve shvot she she also me many already six have come from me the Arba mina shvachos and four already come from the shvachos. So Sar, so the total of ten sons that ten Shvatim are already born. Now Im says Zakh she was expecting another child, if this would be also Zakh, then my sister Rachel will not even have as much as one of the Shvachas. So she had compassion on her. Miyad Nebchalabas, Shinemar Vitkrashma Dina. 
So she was in Spalo that the gender should change to a girl so that Rachel would be able to have at least two Shvotim. So you see that the tefillah does help to change the gender. She called her Dina because she was done Dina Ba'atzma. The more answers, in Maskir Nisim. It's true through a Nis, but that is not commonplace and we're not mispalal for a Nis. An average person is not mispalal from uh, not masculine Maisa Nisim. We by same alternatively, Maisa Lay was say Harbai Mim Hava. Alternatively, it was not a Nis by Lay and it helped because it was within 40 days. So at that point, the Tfila will help because the gender is not determined. Get a sign of Shleshi on Mirishainim on the first three days. When his wife is expecting that it should now be Masriya and it should be into form into a child. From three days to forty days, he should daven that it should be that at that point he can still daven that it should be a male. From forty days till three months, he should be mispalo that through the relationships that the the uh, uber should not be flattened and become a sandal that should not miscarry that there should be birth should be bisholom frank the gemora does tfila happen even at the early stages even within 40 days of tfila help if the the husband the man is mazriya tchila then he's the one that is first then it's a in the cave it's a girl if she's mazriya if she's mazriya tchila the yolda zoch then it becomes a zocher. So it seems to be a natural occurrence. It's an inevitable occurrence, and L'chayar Tzvila doesn't help. More answers, Zocher Ma'ezkin, and Kancha Azri, Ushnei Bevasach, as it was both at the same time, and therefore it's not predetermined, Tzvila could help. So he heard screaming from the city. Omar, he said, Muftachanish, Ein Zebesach, Beisi. He says, I'm confident that this is not this calamity it's not coming from my house on, on him the posseg says on the type of person like him it says the posseg he has confidence in Hashem and he has faith he doesn't have to worry from any mishap the way you darshan, if you darshan from front to end or from the end to the front, it'll have the same connotation. From the beginning to the end, the meaning is, he's not going to be afraid of any evil tidings. What's the reason? Because he has faith in Hashem. If you darshan, read it from back to front, it has the same connotation. Since he's not he's not afraid of bad tidings. I would tell me that the Havaka Azul Basar Dravishma he was the Talmud was was walking behind him in the Shuk, Vishuka did see him. Khazir the Kamalafka. So Rishma saw that he was afraid, he was frightened. Amrlay Khata, if you're being afraid, that's that's considered a chet, that's considered a sin to be afraid. So it's they're considered chaitan, they're considered a chaita if they have fear. It seems to be fortunate is the one who is mefaqat. It seems to be that is a good thing. To be afraid and worrying about your director, worrying that you might forget it, that's a good thing. But we are afraid of these natural type of uh, situations of of uh, uh, calamities, etc. That is, you should be betuach b'shem. He was walking by an Esach, he sighed. You're sighing, you want to bring suffering upon yourself by, by crafting my sign? So it came upon him, me, because of the Pacha. I have a son of a son More answers again. How about David so the Mishnah continues and says when he comes into a city he makes a tefillah when he leaves he makes a tefillah when he 
comes, he makes tefillah. What does he make? The bracha nichnas lekrach. Tan rabbanu bekini salsa ma'u omer. When he comes into the city, what's the tefillah? He wrote some lefanecha shem lekai she tachni senel lekrach zel l'shol. That you should bring me in with peace into the city. Nichnas when he came peacefully unharmed omer moedinaf ani lefanecha shem lekai she tachni senel lekrach zel l'shol. He gives thanks to Hashem that he brought me peacefully. Because Lot says when he wants to leave, I marry your Rosh Lefanecha, Shem Lekai Velekai Vesayish, Shetetzin Vekrach Zel Shol, that you should bring me out with Shol. Yotza Omer Moedin Lefanecha, Shem Lekai Shetetzin Vekrach Zel Shol, and you give thanks for that. Okay, Shem Shetetzin Vekrach Zel Shol, and Kach Tov Luchen Shol, and just like you brought me out of the city peacefully, you should leave me with Shol, and just Luchen Shol, and support me with peacefully. That's the My steps should go to Shem Shol. And save me from any mishaps, enemies, and the on the journey. Amravasa, this that you make this bracha in the city, that's only where there's no justice, there's no courts, there's no officers. But a city where there has judgment and they, they kill people who kill less than both. You know, according to the second law, even in that type of a city, you make the bracha because because maybe there will know in the judgment, maybe he will not find be found uh, innocent, maybe in the there will be no one who will testify on his behalf. So in those days, the bathhouses were considered dangerous because the fire to heat up the bathhouses were under the floors, and sometimes they could collapse. So he makes a brachi, that you should save me this. And similar types of situations. The im yerabi davar kol kol avam, and if some mishap should befall me, tell me it's also kapora that the mishap should be kapon and be a kapora forgiveness. The whole avin oisim, amar abay loy leme in a shach a person should not say that to loy lift up kumila salta, should not be pesach pela salta. Right, you should not mention if something bad happens. Don't open the mouth of the sultan that might, in fact. Bleed to it, it actually happening. You should not be paisach piv l'sotan. Don't give an opening for the sotan. We're almost like sotan. My Adolai Novi, Shimu Dvar Hashem, Gitsini Sam, he already called them Gitsini Sam. He says, We almost were in there already. Now he calls them the officers of Stoim. When he leaves safely, and safely, what safely? What should he say? You saved me from the fire. Ravvo went to the bathhouse. If this bay to say the floor collapsed from underneath him. It's actually Nisa, and Ines happened for him. Come Alamuda, and he stood on a pillar. Shosiv may have a chad gavre, a chad avre, and he was able to hold up and save 101 people with one limb. Hainu the Ravacha. So that is what Ravacha, he says, save me from this fire because the floor collapsed, there was a fire underneath. The Goyen takes out this portion, the Omer Ravacha, it's not Goyen. If a person goes in for bloodletting, that this bloodletting, this procedure should be a refuah for me and you should heal me. And your refuah is, is, is MS, it's truthful. It's not really the natural, it should not be the proper way for people to seek a refuah from from humans, but that's what they're knowing. He said, no, that's not, you should not say that. You see, you are allowed to seek medical attention and go to a doctor. So therefore, you should not, you should delete that section. When he is out, his procedure went safely, and it and everything was b'sholem. You should say that Baruch Reifa Chinam, you're a Reifa that heals even without Chinam for free. With your Reifa Chinam, and you and give Shavu for being healed.